this يعني, life and time can be just as much of a curse as it can be a blessing based on how a person deals with their time, based on what they spend their time doing. So the greatest gift we can be given along with Iman is time to exercise this Iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by time itself in order to articulate how precious this commodity is. He said, well, also, I swear by time itself Indeed, the human being, indeed, all of humanity is in loss. All of humanity is in a state of loss. So he swears by time itself, that includes all of humanity. He swears by time itself, that all of humanity is in loss. No matter what their achievements are, it ends with what? With death. It is sealed there. No matter how strong or tall a building is built, no matter how much of an uh, engineering feat and achievement it is, one day it will be become dust again. It is Grinding away, all of this creation is grinding away towards loss, towards an end. And so no matter what the achievement is, it is in loss. It is in vain, except, he makes an exception there. There is an exception to that statement of Allah, but we want to stop there for a second. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time and then he follows it up with indeed. I swear by time itself, indeed humanity is in a state of loss. Now why is that? The scholars of Balagha mention, the scholars of eloquence when it comes to the Arabic language, the linguists, they mention a principle and that is that a person only swears by something when the listener is not in a state of agreement with them. Yani, humanity does not believe they are in a state of loss. As a matter of fact, not only is that their action, but that is their statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned regarding the non-Muslim, the person who has not been given enlightenment or not been given the keys of Allah's pleasure, belief in Allah in the last day, that the attitude of the disbeliever is if I were to be taken back and meet my Lord, indeed for me there is something very good, better than this world. How often do we hear it? Anybody that will die, they will say, you know, but I know now he's in heaven looking down on us. How, how, how precious and cute. A person can be a killer, a criminal, a wicked man, but as soon as they die in his eulogy, I know he's in a better place now. How do you know that? What has this person done in order to be deserving of a better place? They base it on their fortunes in this life. They say, if I've been given all this money, if I've been given all these friends, if I've been given all this here, then you could imagine what God has in store for me when I, when I push over. This is how they base their, their thoughts. So the non-Muslim, the disbeliever, the person who has not been given guidance, this individual does not agree that they are in loss. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of humanity and time itself, swears by time itself that all of humanity is in loss and everything they do is in vain, except those who believe. And 
work righteous deeds and advise one another with the truth and our advising of one another with patience. So he mentions four things. Our natural state is a state of loss. Everything we do in this world is in vain. Unless we couple our actions with these four conditions. If we, the more we have these four things in our life, the less we are losing in our life. No matter what a person has, no matter what they've accumulated, they will die and leave it. And the human being is fooled very easily. Fooled with time, fooled with safety, fooled with all of these things. Their wife will tell them, baby, I love you forever. No one for me except for you. But as soon as she takes you and puts you in that hole, she will find someone else eventually. Eventually she's gonna get lonely and replace you. All the money you accumulated, eventually someone else is gonna get it free of charge, for free. Your children, they're gonna forget about you. They'll remember you every now and then. Rahimahullah. But that's about it. This world will continue to grind on without us, just like it did before we were here. So to think that the human being in this world is not in a state of loss is a very, very uh, gross mistake, very mistaken. The human being is in loss unless they have the pleasure of Allah. And the pleasure of Allah comes with the implementation of four things. Belief, righteous deeds, calling others to that belief and righteous deeds, and patience. These are the four things. The more a person believes and worships Allah, and calls others to the worship of Allah, and is patient upon those things, the more they will gain, the less of a loss they will suffer. So all of our time, no matter how long we live, how long you're gonna live, 60 years, 70 years, 600 years, 6,000 years, it's a flash in the pan, it's nothing. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Adam alayhi salam, his lifespan as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned was 1,000 years. That was to be his lifespan. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him the Prophets, kasuraj, he said, he showed them, he showed Adam when he created him the Prophets from his offspring, and they were as they were like lanterns. Some lanterns were brighter than others. And each prophet had a light resonating from his forehead. He saw a prophet with a particularly bright light, brighter than all the rest. And he asked, who is this prophet? Who is this one? Listen to the narration. It was said to Adam alayhi salam, this is a prophet from your offspring, fi akhir zaman, that will come at the end of time. His name is Dawood alayhi salam. So Dawood alayhi salam came after Musa, between Musa and Isa alayhi salam. He is one of the prophets of Bani Israel. Dawood alayhi salam, Allahu a'lam how many thousands of years since Dawood had passed away, that is considered the end of time. And so, Adam alayhi salam liked Dawood so much that he gave him 40 years of his own life. 
He said, how long is his life? He was told 60 years. He said, I'll give him 40 from mine, make it 100. Now, look at how fast time goes. At 960 years, could you imagine 960 years? The angel of death came to Adam السلام, It's time to go home. Adam السلام, said, wait a minute, you're 40 years early. Look at the attitude. You're 40 years early, wait a minute, it's too soon. 960 years, I still have 40 years left. What is 40 compared to 960? It's nothing. This is how fast time goes. All of the things we've achieved in this world, we can't even prove that it happened. Anybody you've met, any experience that you've had, whatever it is, no matter how vivid, can you prove categorically that it happened to me? It's just in your memory, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how fast this life is. And so, the human being, the prophets, they know this. And so, in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Abu Huraira narrates that when the angel of death came to Musa alayhi salam to take him, to take his soul, uh, he didn't want to go yet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an ultimatum. He said, tell him to place his hand on the side of a bull. And the amount of hairs underneath his hand on the side of that bull, each hair he will be given one year. Could you imagine? Put your hand on the side of a bull. The, the however many hairs your hand covers is one year for each hair. Uh, one of us, we would have probably only two hands. Now, when the angel of death came to him and gave him this ultimatum, Musa السلام, said, and then what? What after that? He said, Qala al -maut. He said, then death. He said, Fal'an. He said, why not just now then? Let's just get it over with. If that is where we're going to go anyways, let's just do it now. And so, Musa alayhi salam chose to, he chose death over that ultim in that ultimatum. He chose death over that. Because no matter how long you live, you're going to meet your death eventually. So don't get too comfortable you're leaving just now. In Sunan al-Darimi, Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and said to him, Ya Muhammad, Ahbib man shi'ta fa innaka mufariqu. Wa'mal ma shi'ta fa innaka mujzam bih. Wa'ish ma shi'ta fa innaka mayit. He came to him and said, Muhammad, I want to tell you something. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, live as long as you like, but know eventually you're going to die. Love whoever you like, but know eventually you are going to part ways from that individual. And do whatever you like, but keep in mind that you will be recompensed for whatever you do. This is the nature of this world. We live in a world of contrast. Without death, we don't know what is life. Without heat, we don't know what is what is cold. This life is based on depravity. You have to be deprived of something before you can appreciate it. That's how it works. And so the human being is in a state of loss except for those who believe, work righteous deeds. Call to that belief and that righteous deeds others and are patient upon that. This is the way an individual comes out of that loss. The more a person does these four things, the less of a loss they will face and suffer. So the first thing he mentioned is belief. Belief comes from knowledge. Belief is when an individual 
know something and is sure of it. They have certainty of it. This is belief. And so belief resides in the heart, in the mind, and that is knowledge. That an individual first must learn. After that, they must implement what they learn. Because knowledge is like a tree and its implementation is its fruit. Without implementing that knowledge, it is not a virtue. Knowledge itself alone is not a virtue. Knowledge is only a virtue when it is implemented, only. Now, a person does not get any virtue just by knowing. As a matter of fact, the more a person knows and fails to implement, the more dispraised they are. Because the one who knows and refuses to implement is not like the one who doesn't know in the first place. And knowledge really is only considered knowledge in the Quran if it is implemented. I mean, for example, if a person says, I believe, I know and believe and have conviction and the person isn't out of their mind. They say, I know and I believe and I have conviction that if I stick my hand into a light socket, I'm gonna get zapped. And then they walk over and stick their hand in, in their finger into a light socket. We would say this person knows and has conviction of that or this individual does not know. This person is ignorant. Likewise, a person who says, I believe in Allah in the last day, yet does nothing about it. This person doesn't really have conviction because belief is something that pushes an individual to do something. Belief necessitates action. That is what belief is. That's the difference between belief and everything else. Belief is something that necessitates action. Person has such conviction of it that it forces them to change. It forces them to implement what they have believed in. So the first thing we have to do is we have to learn. We have to learn. The first thing we have to do to get out of this state of loss and for our lives to have a meaning is we have to learn. Now, what are we talking about when we are saying learning? We are speaking about knowledge of the legislation of Allah, knowledge of the divine revelations of Allah. We are speaking about legislative knowledge the knowledge referred to in the Quran and Sunnah. Now, and that is Ma'rifatu, Ma'rifatu Allah, wa Ma'rifatu Nabiyyihi, wa Ma'rifatu Deen al Islam bil Adilla. Knowledge in the Quran, anytime we hear knowledge, and it is not ascribed to anything else, knowledge of anything specific, just knowledge. And say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. What is that knowledge the Prophet ﷺ is being commanded to ask Allah for more of? It is knowledge of Allah, knowledge of the legislation of Islam, and knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. With evidence. Uh -huh, that's the difference. Because in order for us to pass that test, we have to have evidence. And I will share with you a narration. There's a narration in Sunan Abi Dawood and Musnad Ahmad. On the authority of Al Bara ibn Azif, one of the companions of the Prophet. It is a very, very long narration in which the Prophet 
describes what happens from the moment of death. What happens to a person from the moment of death. When the angels of death come to take a person's soul from their body and what is done with the soul, etc. Uh, we won't mention all of it. We'll mention just a part of it. And this is the, the part that we really need to understand tonight. The Prophet said, He said, and when the individual is placed in his grave, two angels will come to him. And they will sit him up. They will make him sit up. Uh, people come and ask questions. Sometimes you wonder what is going on in people's minds. They say, they will come and sit him up in his grave. How is there room to sit in the grave? This is not even a logical question. This is not a, a part of this physical world. This is something beyond our limited knowledge of physics, of the way this world works. What we need to know is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, two angels will come and sit him up. And they will ask him. They will say to him, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? What's meant by Lord here, the word Rabb in the Arabic language has more than 14 meanings. In this context, a Rabb means who did you used to worship? Who was your God that you worshipped? Who was your worship to? That is what it means. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ O people, worship your Lord. Meaning the one that has created, he is the only one worthy of worship. So they will say to him, who is your Lord? Meaning who did you used to worship? People will answer based on how they lived. This is not like a test where you just memorize the answers and go through the motions, no. This answers to these questions, you will be given. You won't give. You will be given these answers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is Allah. Allah will keep firm with the correct and firm statements as the companions said, this statement is the statement of La ilaha illallah. In the life of this world and in the hereafter. They said, meaning when a person is asked in their grave, who is your Lord? Who did you worship? If a person worshiped Allah, they will say, Rabbi Allah. My Lord, the one who I spent my life devoted to is Allah. Some people will say it's Krishna. Some people will say it is uh, Brahman. Some people will say it is Shiva. Some people will say it is Zeus or Thor. Some people will say it is Jesus. <coughs> and some people will say, ha, ha, la adri. Some people will say, uh, I don't know. I heard the people saying something, so I repeated it after them. This is the point here. So when we speak about knowledge, we're not just talking about, oh, I grew up in a Muslim family, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that's all. That's the end of the show. No, that's not what we're speaking about. Because an individual must, in order for this answer to be valid, must know the truth, the answer to this question, 
with its evidence from the Quran at least once in their life. They don't have to memorize it. They have to have heard it and understood it and believed in it at least once in their life for it to be considered knowledge. And that is very important. So they will say to him, who did you used to worship? Who is your Lord? Some people will say, Rabbi Allah. My Lord is Allah. We ask Allah to make us of those individuals. Amen. And some people will say, it is whoever else. And some people will say, and these are people who lived amongst the Muslims, said what they said, but did not learn from the Quran. They will say, ha, ha. Ha in the Arabic language is like saying, um, uh, uh, I don't know. I heard the people saying something, I just repeated it after them to tell you the truth. The next question they will ask him, the Prophet وسلم, said, فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ وَمَا دِينُكَ And what is your religion? The person will answer accordingly. The true believer will say, Dini al-Islam. My religion is Islam. The hypocrite, the one who did not take it upon himself, lived on this earth for 60 or 70 or 80 years, squandered all of it. Now, and this is the problem. People choose to look for the truth sometimes in the most critical times. People wait until they are on the edge of the grave. When they're laying on their deathbed, okay, bring an imam. Imam, pray for me. Or now they're scrambling. They got the diagnosis, you have a couple months to live. Now they're scrambling. Now they want to be guided. Now, what have you been doing? Where have you been for the last 60 years? What have you been doing? Waking up, going to sleep, eating, drinking. You didn't think once, where did these cosmos come from? Who am I? What am I? Who do I belong to? Why am I? That didn't cross your mind. You squandered all of that time. The individual will answer accordingly. Then the third question, they will say to him, وَمَا هَذَا الرَّجُلُ الَّذِي بُعِثَ فِيكُمْ and what was this man that was sent to you all? The believer again will say, Huwa Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah. And the hypocrite, the one who squandered their time on this earth, they didn't take it upon themselves to learn anything. People, it's amazing, people are. So old, they still don't know how to read the Quran. They still don't know how to read Surah Al-Fatiha. But we do know how to read 100 and 200 page uh, lease agreements. We can read that fine. We can read technicalities on the stock market and finances and understand that jargon and nonsense very well. But Allah's words, we didn't know. We didn't know how to read it. Now, if this is how we're living, we're not. We, it doesn't look very, uh, uh, very good. Uh, it's, a, it's looking very dismal. If this is how we are choosing to spend our time on this earth. But the point of the narration is what comes after. The believer will say he is the messenger of Allah. The hypocrite will say, "Ha ha la adri." Hmm, I'm, I'm not sure. I heard the people saying something, so I just repeated it after them. Listen to the next part. The same person that when he was asked, who is your Lord? He said, Allah. Who is, what is your religion? Islam. Who was this man sent amongst you? He is the messenger of Allah. He answered the three questions correctly. Eternity now, he will enjoy in the shade of this questions that he answered. But it doesn't end there. The Prophet said after he answers these questions, 
the angels will say to him, وَمَا عِلْمُكَ بِهِ And how do you know that? He said, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, this man is the messenger of Allah, they will say, and how do you know? How do you know that? What is your evidence for that? The Prophet ﷺ said, the believer will say, يَقُولُ قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَآمَنْتُ وَصَدَّقْتُ The believer will say, I read the book of Allah, I read the Qur'an, and I believed in it, and I implemented that belief. My actions followed what my tongue was saying. That is when the Prophet ﷺ said, then a door of paradise will open upon him and it will be said from above, indeed my servant has been truthful and upright. He has proved truthful and true in that. So furnish his grave for him with the furnishings of paradise and clothe him from the garments of paradise, etc. All of that comes after. So it's not enough for us just to say, yes, Allah is my, Allah is my Lord, uh, Islam is my religion, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my prophet, and that's it. It ends there. No. How do you know? And so, when we say knowledge, we are speaking about Knowing Allah, knowing His Prophet, and the religion of Islam with evidences. With evidence from the Quran, evidence from the statements of the Prophet ﷺ. For this reason, the scholars have mentioned, and this is the words of As-Saffarini rahimahullah and others, like Al-Hulwani. They mention that in order for a person's Islam to be valid, in order for their core beliefs to be valid, they must have known the evidence from the Quran or Sunnah at least once in their life. Even if they forget the evidence later. But they will have heard it at least once. And from this comes the, state, the very famous statement of the scholars, and this is in the form of their hip as well. لا يجوز التقليد في العقائد. That Blind following is not sufficient when it comes to beliefs, issues of belief. And so, when a person believes